After studying this module, you shall be able to learn about the basics and history of inclusion compounds, know about the different classification of inclusion compounds by various scientists in this field, understand the structural aspect of the inclusion compounds and finally learn the uses of these inclusion compounds in various fields. A broad area of intermolecular interactions has been obtained by the studies on supramolecular chemistry where covalent bonds are not likely to form between the interacting species. Thus, most of the interaction has been performed by host guest interactions, which involves non-covalent interactions like hydrogen bond, hydrophobic interactions, dipolar interactions, etc. An inclusion compound or an inclusion complex may be defined as a complex which comprise of one component that is called the host, which is forming a cavity. In case of a crystal, it consists of a crystal lattice containing spaces in the shape of long tunnels or channels in which the molecular entities of a second chemical species, which is called the guest molecule, are located. There exists no covalent bonding between the guest and the host. The interaction is mainly attributed to the van der Waal forces. If the spaces in the host lattice are enclosed from all the sides, so that the gas molecule species are trapped inside a cage, such compounds are called clathrates or cage compounds. The stereochemistry as well as in some cases the polarity of both the host as well as the gas molecules determine the feasibility of the inclusion process. The close fit of the two components as a result produces a combination of significant strength. This is because the total dispersion forces between the interacting components, this type of spatial complex does not form by means of ionic or covalent or coordinate uh, covalent bonds. On the contrary, it is dependent upon the dispersion forces and possibly highly oriented dipoles for stability. Contrasting markedly with the usual concept of chemical complexation which you have already done like in the coordination complexes. This is supramolecular complexes. Among the host molecules, the cyclodextrins are the most promising candidates to form the inclusion compounds. And the next module speak in volumes about the synthesis and commercial uses of these cyclodextrins. In this module, we shall focus mainly on the inclusion compounds and the interactions involved in the complexation and various categories of inclusion compounds known to us. Let us have a brief overview of the history of these inclusion complexes. The scientist named Miles observed the inclusion compounds for the first time in 1886. They appeared as unusual complexations occurring between hydroquinone and uh, several some volatile compounds. He proposed that the two components were interacting without chemical bonding and also proposed that one molecule was enclosed in the other. Years later, these observations were confirmed by X-ray analysis. The general title for this class of complexes were given as Einschlusswerbingen, which is a German name for inclusion compounds. It was first used by Schlenk in 1950, which seems to be suitable for all inclusion type systems, considering some characteristic features of host guest association, such as no covalent bond between host and guest and or the dissociation or association equilibrium in solution, which is also published by Cram in 1954. Various other terms have also been used to describe these complexes as uh, occlusion compounds or edducts or clatterates. For example, the scientist named Barrer divided the inclusion compounds into three categories based on the varying concept of the host crystal. And these categories are those uh, that are stable in the presence and as well as the absence of guest molecules alike and then there are those compounds in which the amount of guest may be changed but which have a critical concentration of guest molecules below which the host structure becomes metastable and recrystallizes. And the third category are those in which the host framework continuously readjusts itself as the content of guest molecules fluctuates. A more convenient and workable classification utilized in this review is based on the organization of inclusion compounds by their structure and properties. We have different categories based on their structure and properties as first one is polymolecular inclusion compounds which uh, have a kind of uh, the cavity which is like channel or cage like spaces 
and then we have monomolecular inclusion compounds. Then we have the products of blue iodine reaction. You know that iodine forms a blue complexes with starch. So these complexes can come under this category. And then finally the macromolecular inclusion compounds. Let us take these uh, categories one by one. The first one is polymolecular inclusion complexes. The polymolecular inclusion complexes comprise of a host structure and the host structure is composed of several molecules oriented in a loosely arranged lattice. The individual members of the host lattice interact with each other through hydrogen bonds and other non-covalent interactions to form a channel or a cage-like structure thereby enclosing the guest molecule. So you have a number of host molecules which are uh, I could say uh, arranged in a, what you call a supramolecular assembly with non-covalent bonding like hydrogen bonds or other interactions and they form the host molecules wherein the guest molecule can be encapsulated. Now as expected by the coordination theory, they are not arranged in a whole number ratio to guest molecules as you have seen in the coordination complexes. So this is different from the coordination complexes here. Now examples are urea, thiourea and various cholic acids. These are the examples of channel like polynuclear inclusion complexes. The latter ones are one of the most early documented inclusion complexes. That is the one with the cholic acids. Now the term clathrate. It is derived from the Latin word clathratus, literally meaning enclosed by bars of a grating. It has been used to describe the cage-like structures of hydroquinone inclusion compounds. These comprises the second class of polymolecular inclusion compounds. In addition to hydroquinone, this group consists of water or gas hydrates or tetraethyl ammonium hydrates, phenols, dynins compound, Dynin compounds is a product of condensation of phenol when mesethyl oxide with cycloveratrol as shown in the figure. And the number of complexes in addition to hydroquinone are known to make cage like structures. For example, you can see that the two molecules of cyclotriveratrolyl, in short it is known as CTV, is shown to encapsulate a protonate morphine molecule shown in the ball stick model. Another example is triothiomide as shown in this figure and it is one of the most versatile polymer inclusion complexes as it can form either channel like or cage like void spaces depending on the size and the shape of the guest molecules. You know the conformation changes as the shape of the guest changes the conformation of the cavity also is modulated accordingly. Now let's move on to the second category which is the monomolecular inclusion complexes. Now monomolecular as the name suggests it has got only one molecule of the guest and the one molecule of the host. These monomolecular inclusion compounds constitute the second major class of inclusion compounds. The monomolecular inclusion compounds are an increasing area of interest and utility with reference to biological and pharmaceutical system. In fact they have been used in the drug delivery system recently. These compounds generally interact on one is to one basis with the guest molecule which is enclosed within the cavity in the host molecule. This category includes cyclodextrin as shown in the figure. A guest molecule can get encapsulated in a bucket shaped cyclodextrin molecule to form a inclusion complex. Other examples of monomolecular complexes are formed by crown eaters, calyxerines, thiocrowns, etc. The third category belongs to the product of blue iodine reaction. This class of inclusion complexes is quite related to both the polymolecular and the monomolecular inclusion compounds. How is this possible? Because uh, you know the, uh, there is a blue iodine uh, starch complex that is formed between the iodine and the starch molecule and the starch molecule itself has a complex structure where you have amylose and amylopectin staying together. So it is a combination of polymolecular as well as monomolecular inclusion. You know that iodine is able to interact with starch as well as cyclodextrins, flavones or coumarins, in fact uh, for that matter also with benzophenone and benzamide and cellulose and barbituric acid to give blue addition compound. For over a century and a half the blue black color resulting from the reaction between iodine and starch has drawn interest of many scientists. Frutenberg in 1939 with his team proposed that this color change was a result of inclusion compound formation. Subsequently, 
Kramer with his team indicated that a soluble channel-like inclusion compound was formed by the polymerization of iodine atoms into a linear template around which the starch molecules formed a helix. This type of helical structure including the iodine polymer was stable only as the inclusion compound. Instead of the characteristic red-brown color of iodine solutions, this inclusion compound was blue-black. Hence, the common name for this phenomena is the blue-black iodine reaction. Now, this phenomena has been attributed to the polymerization of iodine within the unique channels formed by these compounds. Now, let's uh, see the another category that is called macromolecular inclusion compounds. Now, again, as the name suggests, macromolecule means a bigger molecule. Now, the two terms macromolecular inclusion compounds and the molecular sieves have been used to classify this fourth group of complexes. These compounds have been thoroughly investigated and have wide use in industrial and laboratory processes. The numerous zeolites are the most common in this category where the modified dextrins and polyacrylamide and agarose gels, silica gels and other substances are also included under this category. Inclusion compounds have been studied by a variety of conventional analytical methods including microscopy, IR spectroscopy, UV spectroscopy, differential thermal analysis, NMR, X-ray analysis. All such methods can be used to study these inclusion complexes. There are a plethora of uses of these inclusion complexes which range from pharmaceutical industry where an inclusion complexes of cyclodextrin have been employed for drug delivery to zeolites which are used in ion exchange water softeners. You have seen the ion exchange water softeners which remove the uh, calcium ions from hard water and uh, convert them or replace them with sodium ions to make the uh, hard water into soft water. These are examples of huge class of compounds which have a wide range of uses. In the next modules, we will take specific examples of inclusion compounds and throw some more light on their structural aspects, synthesis and their applications. Now let us summarize what we have learned in this module. We have learned that an inclusion compound or an inclusion complex may be defined as a complex which comprises of a host forming a cavity. In case of a crystal, it consists of a crystal lattice containing spaces in the shape of long tunnels or channels in which the guest species can be located. There exists no covalent bonding between the guest and the host and the attraction being mainly attributed to van der Waals forces. Miles, he was the first one to identify inclusion compounds in 1886. They appeared as unusual complexations occurring between hydroquinone and several volatile compounds. A more convenient and workable classification in this review was based on the organization of inclusion compounds by their structure and the properties. And we classified them as polymolecular inclusion compounds wherein we have spaces for guests uh, which can be in the shape of a channel or in the shape of a cage. Then we have studied monomolecular inclusion compounds where we have only one host interacting with one guest molecule. And the third category was the products of blue iodine reaction which mainly includes the interaction of iodine with starch molecules. And the last one was macromolecular inclusion compounds wherein the host molecules used were much bigger for example in zeolite and they are called bigger because uh, now they come under the category of macromolecules because they have a larger size, much larger size as compared to uh, cyclodextrins or calyxetrines or cryptans. So this is what we have learned in this module.